Are you sure you are going to get in through there? Yes, I think I'm going to go there. And I told you I'm sure about God. I got in through. Yeah, you know, I was thinking today our relationship with God defines us. This week we're learning about being defined by our relationship with God. Our scripture text is taken from Acts chapter 4 verse 13 and it reads, Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. The story is told of a little boy who asked his father what a Christian was. The father, who had been in church for many years and knew the Bible very well, described in detail what being a Christian meant. When he was through, the little guy asked, Daddy, have I ever seen a Christian? <laughs> so yeah, that might have been an amusing story, but it brings home the point. A person is not identified as a Christian because he is called as such, but because of being in a relationship with Christ. We read in the book of Acts of a place called Antioch. It was the third largest city in the Roman Empire, and it was quite massive, with nearly half a million people living there and a diverse mix of cultures and ethnicities. Into this city came a group of women and men, the group shone like a bright light in the midst of darkness, for their lives differed significantly from the rest of the society around them. This group defied cultural norms, not conforming to the ways of Antioch, but seemed bound to a higher calling. We are told that the multicultural city of Antioch was largely a divided one, as the various groups kept to themselves within their own communities. But this group embraced everyone. They practiced humility and extended love and forgiveness, not just among themselves, but also to those outside their group. They broke down racial, cultural, and social barriers. They preached and practiced unity instead. In this city that was known for vices and as a center of moral depravity, this group had a new morality. They honored marriage and kept themselves pure. At that time in the ancient world, women and children were considered as property. But this group behaved differently, giving respect to women and treating children with the dignity they deserve. Instead of worshipping a group of gods, they freely shared about worshipping that one who came from heaven and died on the cross and was resurrected on the third day. The society in that day took note. This group became a fascination for many at Antioch and the Greeks there nicknamed them Christians or those who are party of Christ because they were characterized by a behavior and speech that was centered on Christ. A point of interest is that it was here in Antioch that believers were first called Christians. This is what a relationship with Christ does. Being with Christ causes us to become like him. It transforms us into his image. Others are then able to identify us as believers because of the way we behave, the way we think, and the way we live. In our text today, we see that Peter and John were preaching the gospel of Christ when they were arrested and dragged before the Sanhedrin Council, which is the highest Jewish civil and religious court in the land. Well, at that time. As Peter stood before them, being filled with the Holy Ghost, he boldly converts what should have been his defense into an evangelistic proclamation. As the leaders observed Peter and John, their only response was that these men had been with Jesus. For instead of cowering in fear, they spoke with boldness. These were the men of no education, no status, no accreditation. So how could they have operated with such passion, wisdom, and clarity? Yeah, you guessed it. It's because they had been with Jesus. And so they became like him and were identified by their relationship with him. But you see, relationship defines us. 
So let's make sure that the relationship that defines us is the one that we have with God. For when he is a part of our life, every other relationship will be affected by his presence. Our marriage, our friendship, our relationships at work, with family members, and so on. People know when you have a relationship with God. So our family discussion today is a little bit different from the weeks that we would have done in the past. Um, and we're doing an introspection exercise. As you know, introspection is self-assessment. Assess yourself, ask yourself, you know, the way you, you think, the way you act, the way you respond to things, you are assessing yourself. It's still a family discussion, so you can do an introspection in front of your family and be encouraging to each other. It's, it's not to be judgmental on anybody or someone get, get in trouble, but it's to encourage, encourage each other in what we're doing. So we are, we, talk, we are talking this month on our relationship with God. And what we would have spoken about is that our relationship with God defines who we are. It defines who I am as a person. And this is a very good exercise to do. Introspection is always good. We should always be checking up on ourselves. So our relationship with, with God, it defines who we are and it shapes our character. And that would entail how we act, the things we speak, how you think, everything that is about you. And we should remember that because we are Christ's ambassadors here in the world. And we should represent our Father well. And if you would notice, these days it's, these days it's kind of like a popularity contest. So, and all of a sudden people's behavior is changing according to popular culture. Um, some certain things from back in the day was acceptable and was not acceptable, I should say, and now it is acceptable. And everybody is fine with that and everybody is going with that. But if your life is based on principle, you would know that God is the same yesterday, today and forever. And the instruction from God, it doesn't change who we are and it should not change who we are. So do the introspection exercise. So I'm just going to give some guidance on how to do it. So the first question is, do others know that you are a believer only when you tell them? Are they surprised when you tell them? So when you're thinking of the question for yourself, do other people know that I'm a believer? Or are they surprised when I tell them that I am a Christian? And that should be something you think about if the answer is no. And what am I doing wrong? Or what should be, what I should fix? Is it that people notice a positive change in my life? If it is that in the past, you know, you, you, you had a different lifestyle. The other question is, do those around you see something of Christ's love, his forgiveness, his humility in you? Are other people seeing that you are a kind person? Are the people in the office when they're grouping around gossiping about someone, is it that they know if you are there, it will be different? It's either you would stand up for the person, you would tell them, you know, it's not, and it's, it's, it's not to judge anybody, but you know, they would know you are not the person they could come around with the vulgar talk or a certain type of joke. Is it that they will know that? And we have to remember that it's not like we're doing it for anyone. We're doing it in honor to God. You know, the Bible said, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of, of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O God. And we have to remember that we are children of God and we live our lives for Him. Um, and the other question is, is your lifestyle a witness of your faith in Christ? Do your actions glorify God? Am I, I'm asking myself, is my lifestyle a witness of, of God? Is it that I'm so involved in worldly things that people will never guess that I am a Christian? Is it that uh, I'm the kind of person who, okay, she's a good person, eh? but you know, when she gets angry, don't come around her, you know. Is that who is defining me? And I have to ask myself that question and I have to make sure, and we have to make sure that we're not leaving room for the enemy. We're not, because the enemy will tempt you. People will tempt you, they will try you. I have been invited to certain events already. And this is the wording of the event. Bex, I know you don't go to things like this, huh? but, and then the invitation comes. If you don't know I don't go to it, why are you inviting me? People still try, or if you're in a group of friends, you know, well, I know you don't really drink and do this and things, but you want one? And it happens, and sometimes people succumb to it. Am I gonna be defined as the person who, okay, well, you do the right thing depending on who is there? These are things that, you know, we need to ask ourselves because when we have a relationship with God, that is what should define us. And as we would have read in the devotional, we are in the world. So it's not there to judge anybody, but it is who we are. We would stand up for righteousness. We would do the right thing and we would love others as we would have read previously. And the last one is, would anyone will be able to look at me today and say that I am a Christian? And that's what, that's what we need to ask. Yes, many of us would have a past. 
and it's in the past. Thank God for Jesus and his blood that would have washed us that it's in the past. But today, as of right now, would my relationship with Almighty God define who I am? And let's all work on that answer being yes. I hope it's yes. And we trust that you will continue to invest in your relationship with God so that, that it would define you.